Hey everybody, Backpack Hack here coming at you with another trail tip. And I want to address specifically a method of, a, I don't know whether you want to call it a function or a feature, but I call it a flaw of lighting that's available today. Now I don't care whether you're talking about flashlights, headlamps, lanterns, which I don't have, or even a rail mounted light for a firearm. The principle is the same. And that is, when I was a kid, this was a flashlight. Just about everybody that went camping had a flashlight like this. Two D cells, steel body, no plain old incandescent lamp. And when you turned it on, this one's got a full on it. But when you turned it on, you got a light. You turn it off and on. Those were the two modes you had, on and off. The only way to adjust the light output of a flashlight like this is either put some sort of filter in front of it or just let the battery start to die and it gets dimmer. You can still buy flashlights today that have one light level. This is my backup everyday flashlight. It only has one level. My EDC flashlight today is a Zebralite SC600 FD4+. I love this because it's programmable. You can sit here and do all sorts of different things with this. And the thing I like about it is when I turn it on, I get light. If I want more light, I can get more light. If I want more light lit, I can get more light, okay? If I turn it off, it will come back on to that lowest light setting. And that's the way I prefer a flashlight. If I put it on medium and turn it off, when I bring it back on, it's on that low light setting. To me, that is the most natural and intuitive way that a flashlight for, to, should work. A notch down from that is my Phoenix FD40. I turn it on and I get light. If I want more light, I can cycle through the various modes and get more or less light. This one has five lumen levels. And you can see that I'm cycling through all of them. Wherever I stop and I turn the flashlight off, it will come back on to that position. And then I can cycle through the various positions. If I turn it off on the highest level, which I think is a thousand lumens, I turn it back on. I'm at a thousand lumens. That's still an acceptable way to do it. However, there are a lot of lights, and I'm talking just flashlight lighting in general, flashlights, headlamps, lanterns, rail mounted lights on your firearms that have what I call a very bad design. You turn it on, you get light. Great, you think. You turn it off, you turn it back on, you get light, but not the same amount. You turn it off, you turn it on again, and you've got a different mode. Now this flashlight only has those three modes. It goes from high, medium, strobe, high, medium, strobe. That's the only way to access these. But imagine that you're looking for a flashlight. Let's say you're looking for a flashlight about this size. You say, I want it to have anywhere from like 50 to 500 lumens. And I want it to be compact enough that if I wanted to, I could put it in my pocket. Uh, I could put it in my vehicle, sit on my nightstand, whatever. It's just a general all-around utility flashlight. You're looking for one, something like that. And you want it to be driven by an 18650. So you do some research and you come across this wonderful piece of gear. Now you're looking at the specs, and I'm going to throw it up here on the screen. You're looking at the specs and you said you want anywhere from 50 to 500 lumens. Well, this one has 10, 25, 50, 100, 200, 400, and 600 lumens. In addition, it's got a locator or beacon mode, a strobe mode, and an SOS mode. Here's the issue. Suppose that you buy this flashlight because it's within your price range. You say, I don't want to spend more than $50. Well, here it is for $40 with free shipping. You get one, and let's say 100 lumens is where you'd like to keep it at. So you cycle it through, just like this flashlight, to 100 lumens. So you're set at 100 lumens. But when you turn it off and turn it back on, it comes on to 200 lumens. In order to get back to that 100 lumens, you've got to cycle through 200, 400, 600, the flash, the strobe, the SOS, 10, 25, 50, and 100 lumens to get back to there. And you've got to do that every time you shut that flashlight off. 
you've got to cycle through all these modes just to get back to the mode that you want. Conversely, let's say you just want to set it up for 10 lumens to provide a night light in your cabin tent so your kids uh, have a little bit of comfort. So you set it up to 10 and somebody accidentally turns it off. Now you've got to cycle through all of those modes to get back to the 10 lumens. That's annoying. Worse yet, imagine this scenario. You hear a bump in the middle of the night and you grab your firearm and you've got to sit here and click, 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 click. You've got to send out a message like you're on an Aldous lamp, which not only lets the bad guy know that you are present, but also gives away your location because you're sitting here trying to find the right mode for what you want your flashlight to do on your firearm. That's why this flashlight I chose because it only has one mode on. Now this particular flashlight, I can either momentarily turn it on and off or I can turn it on and leave it on. Those are the only two options I have. But I don't want to sit here in a life and death situation and say, oh, I need brighter light. Come on, I need more light, more light. Come on, get to the mode I want. That's a fatal flaw. And that's why I call these things a flaw is because it would just be absolutely insane to have a flashlight with that many modes and you've got to sit here and tap out a Morse code message. Imagine if your TV set did that. Imagine you're sitting there watching channel 248. You turn the TV off. When you turn it back on, it's on channel 249. And the only way to get back to channel 248 is to go all the way through all the channels up to the top end and then start back down at the bottom and work your way back up to 258. And if you miss it, you got to go all the way up and start back at the bottom and come back up again. Now I realize there's a huge difference between a, you know hundreds of channels here and five or ten modes here. But still, it is very aggravating that manufacturers do this. I understand why they're putting them out. Because all they want to do is make the spec sheets look good so you buy their product and they've got their money. And that's what business is about. But you need to do your research to make sure that your modes are available like this or like this as opposed to cycling through just like this one. Now, the reason I don't have an example with a bunch of them is because I've avoided this for years because I hate this idea. So how do you find out whether a flashlight works like this, this, or this? Simple. Google it. Now, I'm using Google in the term of a verb. Look up a Sunray flashlight. Sunray tactical rechargeable flashlight plus the word review. And just put it in your search engine and see what pops up. There's Candle Power Forums, which is a forum about flashlights. I think there's another one. If I, can, I can't think of the name of it. If I find it, I'll put it here in the bottom in the description below, along with Candle Power Forums. YouTube, right here, is a great source. Come to YouTube and say, I want to buy this flashlight. Has anybody reviewed it? Maybe they don't say this is how it works, but from the review or the video, you can watch the person use this flashlight and get a good idea of whether this has this, what I call a fatal flaw, as opposed to something acceptable or something preferred. With that said, this is Backpack Hack. Hopefully I've given you a little nugget of information that you can use out there to make an intelligent decision, an informed decision about your lighting, whether it's a flashlight, a headlamp, a lantern, or a firearm mounted light. So be safe out there, and I'll see you out there on the trail.